Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. It is Thursday, October 21st, 2021. My name's Jennifer Cotton, and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Midlothian, Texas, and that means I teach people how to make greeting cards, scrapbook pages, gift packaging, home decor pieces, and more with stamps, ink, paper, and lots of cool tools. So welcome. If you're um, watching for the first time, thank you very much. And if you're watching for the first time and you've never done any kind of crafting before, you're in the right place because our products are made for the non-crafter, which is me. <laughs> I'm not a crafty person nor a creative person, but I am able to take these products that have done all the art for us and match colors and everything and create cool stuff. Good morning, Pat and Landa. Good to see you guys here. Landa says good morning to everyone. Hey, Pat number two. <laughs> um, so today I will be making for you guys. Well, first of all, let me go back. My, I told you my name, Jennifer Cotton. I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator almost 20 years. November is 20 years that I have been doing this. Um, and after like one year, I have done it full-time ever since. So for 19 years, full-time job. Um, so that's my little history there. Um, good morning, Mary Ann. Today I'm going to be making three cards with the Sweet Little Stockings bundle. So cute. So it's Christmas, it's stockings, it's gifts, but it's also pets. There's a dog, a cat, and a little gerbil or whatever kind of rodent you want that to be. Um, and then there's a set of dies, so that's the bundle portion. Hey, everybody. And the dies, um, of course, coordinate, and so when you buy both in the bundle pricing, you get 10% off, but they are sold separately as well. So you'll see these more when I show my projects today. There's a bunch of prod products that coordinate, coord I was trying to say two things at once. They're made to coordinate with the sweet little stockings, but they work on their own as well, and they're all sold individually. So we have some felt, some ribbon, some dots, and designer paper. So I'll show you all of that when we make our projects. Um, so it's gonna be cute, and if you would like a chance to win the projects I'm making today, you can comment on this video, just like Mary Ann, Terry, good morning, Stella, Sandy. My week is going awesome, just busy as usual. Um, Linda, good morning. So everybody is saying hi, hello, good morning, whatever they want. And, um, and that's getting them entered to win these cards. So please make a comment. You can also, your comment can be a question or a tip or whatever you would like. And, um, and then like Pat did, if you share the video, so click that share button, post it on your page in a group, um, send it to a friend, then you will get entered again. And both of those things help me in my business, so I appreciate it very much. Thank you, thank you. And that's why you get entered to win. Now, if you're watching replay over on YouTube, if you're watching replay on Facebook, you can still do all that stuff. If you're watching replay on YouTube, you can still do all that stuff. So on YouTube, it's a comment, a thumbs up, uh, a subscribe and or turn on the notification bell. All those will get you entered over on YouTube. Um, I saw, what did I see? A comment to respond to. Oh, Pat has not used her set yet. So I think you'll want to get it out after this, Pat. And I know how you are when you get on a roll with um, what you're working on. <laughs> you're really good. Um, but it's so cute. I did a class on it, which I'm gonna show some of those samples today as well um, for retreat. So I've already worked with it once. This is my second time, but it's so cute. And again, if you're a pet lover, you're really gonna want this one. But even if not, it's cute. Uh, trying to look back here and catch up. Charlotte, good morning. And Ramona and Valley Chick, hello. Hey, Susan, hey, Debbie. Flora in New Mexico, good morning. Hey Susan, thanks for sharing. Hey Sh um, Sherry, I scrolled too fast. Hey Diane and Jackie and Joni, good morning. Thanks for sharing Cindy and Ramona. Cool, okay, so um, 
I did yesterday figure out what I'm using for next month's classes. And then I got busy and didn't type up any RSVP links or anything. But um, every month I have four classes anyone in the U.S. can take. They're offered as a to-go option where you can um, have the pa packet mailed to you. And then you get a PDF tutorial and you can then... Um, Create the projects on your own with your own stamps. Everything's cut, die cut, punched, embossed that we possibly can. You see all our die cutting in there. This is my sampler packet from October. And I actually have two of these available. Um, and I don't have the sampler here because someone's checking out those supplies today to make it at their house with my supplies, which is another option. And you can take the class in person once a month. But you can take it to go as well. So it's a really pretty sampler in my opinion, but I can't, sh I don't have it to show. But anyway, I have two of those left and I have one in my scrapbook class left as well. But um, every month you can attend it in person. Hey, Jean, Jeannie, you can check out the supplies for my house if you're local here in Texas, or you can just take it to go and stamp at home. And I have people who do all three every month. It's a, a pretty even mix of who does what. So, um, in November, those classes will be held on November 20th in person. They're actually at my house this month because my new location wasn't available, but the rest of the year they'll be in DeSoto. So, at my house, November 20th, or let me check a calendar. Let me grab my calendar because there's obviously a wrong date written down here. Um, I uh, that they'll be mailed the next day, which is not true. So let me see if I, which date I put wrong. Um, anyway, October, November, yeah, 20th. So they'll be mailed on the 22nd. It's the following Monday. If you take it to go and pay for shipping. Um, a lot of people just pick them up for me who are local. Okay, so um, the card and scrapbook, you'll wanna register by November 18th. Of course, links aren't out yet, but they'll be coming soon. And um, card class is going to be Peaceful Deer Bundle. Super cute. And scrapbook class, we're going to make page two of our Thanksgiving page. <laughs> I've got like stuff in my eyes today. I don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, we'll be making page two of that. And then our, our two new pages will be the Bright Baubles Bundle. That's the one I showed a couple of weeks ago with um, your online ordering special. And I think that's going to make such a cute scrapbook page with all those big ornaments. So, that's scrapbook. Both of those are $15 free with a $20 order. Any questions, just let me know and I can hook you up with links and pricing and how to sign up. Hey, Linda in Mansfield, good morning. Um, and then... Stamp a Stack and Sampler. These are priced differently. They're product-based classes, which means you get some product with your fee. So I am for Sampler, which um, I talked about my Nature's Harvest. I forgot to say that. This is Nature's Harvest Sampler that's for sale. It's $28. Um, a Sampler is a 12 by 12 framed art. Makes a great gift. It makes a great home decor for your own house. This is a, a past one for Halloween. And uh, November is Christmas, and that's the only Christmas ones I'm going to do. So you have to take those in November if you want my Christmas ones. So each class is $28. It includes over $20 in merchandise and uh, everything cut, die cut, punched, ready for you to stamp and assemble whatever the sampler is. Sometimes I do three by three squares. Sometimes I do larger ones like in this one. And sometimes, like this month, there's some three by three and some six and a fourth by three, I believe. Maybe six and a half. Anyway, either way, it'll be 12 by 12 and you can frame it. So, this month, I'm offering three. I did this last year and, of course, we were in person last time with, it was right before COVID, uh, before the shutdown. I think it was last year. Maybe it was two years ago. Anyway. Um, I offered three to choose from. So if you're in my club, which you can join, um, same price, $28, but you just commit, you are getting the Whimsical Trees sampler. That's going to be awesome. I don't have Whimsical Trees here to show because it's in my card class this month, but 
you probably know about it. It's the pink paper, pink and silver. It's like amazing, amazing, amazing. Trees, it's so good. So I think that's gonna be a gorgeous sampler. Then I'm also offering, so when you register, you can also choose Merriest Moments Sampler, which I think, just because I love this stamp set so much, I think it'll make a gorgeous sampler. And Sweets and Treats Sampler. So I have a really good idea for this one. I just needed it to design it. Um, we will use these cloche dies, which are sold separately. Like it's not a bundle because there's a different set this is bundled with. And a couple of my dies are in the back here I'm seeing now. Um, anyway, so three to choose from. I had people the other time I did this take one, two, or all three. So that will be up to you. And it'll be all in the registration link. And if you're in my club, you're going to get the Whimsical Trees one automatically. And, um, but you'll have the chance to add on the others as well. And if you want to join the club after six consecutive months of being in club, paying the same price as everybody else, you get $25 in free merchandise and you can cancel at any time. It's the best club in the industry. 30 or $28 for all that stuff, 20 over 20 in merchandise, um, everything cut, punched, die cut, etc. PDF tutorial. Okay, then Stampa Stack is my last Christmas Stampa Stack for the season. Um, 12 cards, $20 in merchandise, $30. This is a club too, so you can join the club or just sign up for the class. Um, you can join the club now and then the links for classes are coming soon. Hey, Shirley. And we're using whoop, Evening Ever, I mean, Evergreen Elegance. I always get that name wrong. Evergreen Elegance Bundle because it's so good. So that's what we're going to use for our stamp -a stack this month. All right, in November. Any questions, let me know. Um, don't forget to sign up for Words of Cheer. Where's my things? Okay, so I have these set up because I have an event this weekend, so I have a display. But the Words of Cheer class is to go only. You stamp at home. You get the stamp set with your fee, which this is such a great set. And you're going to make six cards. And if you already own that stamp set, you can substitute when you register. You're going to make six gorgeous cards, one of each, with this class. And you're going to get a roll of ribbon. You're going to get a half a pack of the retired uh, Peaceful Deer designer paper. I covered up my notes. But you're getting a bunch of product and the stamp set for only $35, plus everything cut, die cut, punched, ready for you to stamp and assemble these gorgeous cards. So you need to sign up for the Words of Cheer class by November 3rd, so that is coming up here. And um, you can pick it up or have it mailed. You can add on shipping when you register. Thank you, Jennifer. And um, kits will be ready or mailed by November 15th. So that's fun. Oops. Almost dropped all those samples everywhere. That's the first um, like to go class I'm offering right now. And then the next one are my two bonus classes. These are a, a really great value. You're going, thank you, Lori. You're gonna get um, with each one, one or two free items. So for the first one, you're getting the Delicate Dahlia stamp set for free, no charge. You had to spend a hundred to get it before, but now you can get it for free. The class is $35, and it is going to include $20 in merchandise, and you will make four gorgeous cards. Sorry about the glare on the plastic envelopes there. Um, four cards, $20 in merchandise, plus this for $35. This stamp set alone would cost you close to $35 with tax and shipping. So, think about that. It's a great deal. Um, register by November 21st for that one and or it's the same link. You can also register for the counting sheep stamp uh, class, <laughs> which includes for $35 both the counting sheep or the sheep dies and the counting sheep. I'm doing this backwards. Stamp set. You get both of those included for $35. You're going to make six cards three designs, two of each. I think they're adorable, personally. This is one of my favorite fancy folds, the little Z-fold card. And, um, of course, we cut, die-cut, punch, you know, 
Except on this one, we're not going to die cut your sheep for you because we're giving you the dies for free. But we'll we'll die cut the other non-sheep die portions. And um, so six cards, three designs, two of each, $35. And I did use create with friends on this one. So you can substitute other words or, or thank you, Catherine, or what's the word I'm looking for? add it on when you register, which it will be autographed because that's my million dollar stamp set. So hopefully you can say, I don't want the autograph if you would like, that's fine. <laughs> hopefully you'll be wanting that. Uh, anyway, those two are 35 registered by November 21st. So hope you're excited about those. I am. They're very cute. And we're giving you some free stuff there. Um, Christmas gift packaging with games. This is where we play bingo to win hundreds of dollars in prizes and we make projects. This time we're gonna make some gift packaging projects using Merriest Moments Bundle. I just showed that one also for the sampler this month. So I love that bundle so much, really. Like it's got the embossing folder and the dies and the stamp set in the one bundle. It's so pretty. I've used it a ton. I'm using it for a team incentive this month as well. The projects they're going to make, which my helper, Karen, who cut it, was like, these are really cute cards. And I was like, that's a compliment coming from Karen, so thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, so love that stamp set. Got to use it up before it might retire in January. Okay, last but not least on events, the cruise is coming, I believe, October. I need to check with our travel agent, but I think October, which is where we are now, is our last month to get our guaranteed group rate. So even if you just wanna go on a cruise and you don't wanna craft, no problem, or you have family members who are looking for a vacation, please pass it on, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Ann. Um, anyway, cause anyone can get the group rate and they don't have to do the crafting. They don't ever have to interact with us if they don't want. But it's January 30th, 2022, Royal Caribbean out of Galveston, Texas, um, Falmouth, Jamaica, Georgetown, Grand Cayman, and Cozumel, Mexico. Um, when you do the crafting portion, you get your at least a half of a crafting table to yourself. You get six classes included that are self-paced, set up in the room the whole week. You get 150 in merchandise. You get a t-shirt. You get 24-7 um, access to the crop room, you get gifts, you get goodies, um, and then you can take advantage of the ship as well, if you want. Food, which is all included in your price, um, it's under $400 is the lowest price per person right now, um, just for the cruising portion. Of course, the crafting is an add-on. And, um, but depending on what cabin you choose, your price goes up. And it's awesome. So sign up, sign up. And then the next one, which you can still register for now, is January 23rd. I mean, January 2023 on Allure of the Seas, one of those big ships. Um, Sharon says, love Royal Caribbean. I do too. I agree. I've been, like, I've never been, I don't think, on Carnival but I've been on many other um, cruise lines and I really like Royal Caribbean the best out of the ones I've been on. And Sharon says Cozumel is a lovely place. Definitely true. Um, the beaches, the shopping, so cool. Um, I'm gonna try to catch up here. So hello, Sharon. <laughs> hello, Catherine. Uh, let's see who else I missed. Hello, Jennifer. Linda shared, thank you very much. And hello, hello, Debbie and Shirley. I think I, Scott, Shirley. Hey, Janet. Hey, Becky. Carol shared. Thank you very much. Oh, hey, Terry. I saw when your name came across and I was in the middle of something, Terry. So, hello, Terry. Cool. And who says hello? Linda from Idaho. Cool. Sarah, barely caught you live. Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad you caught me. Okay. Um, November's Paper Pumpkin. I think I forgot to bring my little flyer, which it looks, I'm going to reach over here and see if I can see it. Um, I'm not sure where it is. It may be packed for my event Saturday. So I don't have the flyer to show, but I showed it last week. Um, this paper pumpkin kit looks so cute. There's this snowman that's probably about this tall. 
<laughs> and um, it makes little gift boxes, gift packaging. They look like boxes to me about this thick from the little sneak peek picture. Um, but they're die cut out. They're really cute. So, of course, you can use those flat and make uh, cards like I did last week with my um, so cute Love Santa kit. Check that video out. And um, the, what am I trying to say? I should just read my notes. It says, make treat packaging fun and festive, a fun and festive experience. With bright and colorful designs, these treat packages are oversized and made to wow. Um, while treat packaging isn't for everyone, it's still versatile. You can use the pr printed die cuts, like I said, to make Christmas tags, cards, or even a garland. Um, now, every paper pumpkin kit, here's the one from last month, which I'm sorry if you missed it because it's gorgeous, peaceful Christmas. Um, includes a stamp set that's exclusive to the kit, so you cannot purchase it anywhere else. It includes instructions. It includes an ink. And then whatever else you need to make the projects. I will just make you a little jealous of the one we just got. Um, to me, this font is different than a lot of our fonts, which I love because variety. And um, there's little snowflakes. There's trees that match up with lots of other trees that we have currently. So you can mix and match your stamps. Um, peaceful Christmas wishes, Merry Christmas, holiday cheer. And there's some that are too tiny for me to read right now without my glasses. <laughs> From our home to yours, sending you peace and joy all year long. Uh, wishing you and your family all the best. That's a good one. So you can only get these stamps in these kits that are only $22 for all that stuff. And the cute box, $22. Um, now, these cards, again, I haven't made mine yet, but I don't know if you can see that Noel. I don't have any extras, by the way, but um, look at that. That's the envelope. Ooh, ah. And then check out that card base. So, I'm just saying, I would just sign up for Paper Pumpkin <laughs> so you don't miss a kit. Um, Cynthia, I only got mine, I actually got one yesterday. I got several this month. I got one yesterday and the rest came Monday or Tuesday. But of course, we're depending on the post office for that. So, yes, yeah, Sarah, I haven't played with mine yet either, but it's so cute and exciting. <laughs> um, okay, let me see here. So, how you get it, you can either subscribe. I'll put a link in this video on Facebook and YouTube. You can go subscribe and cancel anytime. It's only 22 plus tax only. Catherine got hers yesterday. See, it's, um, so hers came with my second batch, which was, should have all come at one time, but y'all know how it is. Um, I actually heard on the news, like, they literally were saying, mail your Christmas packages now if you want to, to get there in time. And I was like, Ugh, I hope that's not true since I mail customer packages all the time not holiday related <laughs> so let's hope but that's what they said about post office on the news yesterday so anyway mary ann got hers yesterday sharon is still waiting and sharon i think you're in a different state right and i'm sure state to state it's different because like i'll start seeing people getting theirs on facebook way before mine comes but mine is almost always on the same day every month which how I can easily track it is I have my club weekend, all those four classes, and I get it the Monday after that. <laughs> yeah, Ohio. So, I mean, I don't know what, how your mail is in Ohio, but it just seems like whatever region we're in, we kind of get ours in little clumps. Jackie got hers Monday. Cool. Yeah, Susan got hers yesterday. So, hopefully, t um, Sharon, yours is coming today, probably. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, if y'all ever... If you haven't ever tracked it, start marking it down and you'll see it's slow. <laughs> um, at least for me, it usually comes on the same day every month. There are always exceptions, but which are always longer, not faster. <laughs> but anyway, um, so it's $22. If you subscribe, you only pay tax. Shipping is included. Or you don't have to subscribe. You can go to my website and you can buy one month worth two, uh, three months worth, six months, or 12 months. And you get a very small discount when you go up to the higher months. But anyway, that way you're not, like, you pay it one time, you get it for the how many months in a row. 
Um, but the 10th is the deadline. So if you want that December kit, I mean the November kit, you need to register by November 10th. So any questions, let me know. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and point the camera down. Here we go, I'm gonna point it up and then down. <laughs> so a little ceiling action. And flip it right side up and clip you in. Okay, um, we'll see if that's as straight as I think it is. Because it looks different in my when I look at my phone versus actually how it looks on YouTube. Um, anyway, so I want to remind y'all, I always have a monthly. Oh, by the way, thank you to everyone who ordered yesterday with the sale. Um, lots of orders came through. and I, So you guys took advantage of 15% off rubber stamps, red rubber. Um, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. But um, I always have an online ordering special every month. Oh, this is the wrong one. Darn it. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, where can I look it up? Hmm. It's not that code. That's for the 1st through the 15th. I forgot to print the new one. I can look it on my, on my computer. But anyway, there's a host code. And when you're shopping, you enter that code on the shopping page. So, um, after you go to the cart and you see the word checkout, not below, because below is coupon codes, above that you'll see add host code. You click on that and then you put in the code for the month, which I have a code for through the end of October. Um, and then, which it'll be posted in this video um, on both platforms. If your order is 25 or more, with that code, you're gonna get a free class packet to make four cards, and these are the four cards using Bright Baubles. I made these on a video this month, so you can go back and check that out to see how to make them. Um, lots of specialty papers on here, velvet, foil, gorgeous, gorgeous. So you can have this packet mailed to your house for only a $25 order, and it'll be mailed next month and I'll email a PDF tutorial. But there's already a video showing you how to make these as well. And then um, if your order is $50 or more, you're also going to get a free full accessory. Don't forget to put, the, put in the host code though. It is important because, oh, you know what, I might have it, do I? No, I don't. Anyway, um, it's important to put in the host code because Stampin' Up! may not add it for me later and then you can't get the gift from me. Uh, so 50 or more, you're gonna get a free full accessory and uh, I'm planning to give everyone this, I'm blanking on the name, white glittered organdy ribbon. But it's been low inventory, it goes back and forth. So I may have to substitute something for you, but you'll still get a free full accessory from me. Okay, so 25 gets the kit, 50 gets the accessory, and it is limit one kit per person per month, but I do offer two accessories. We already passed the one at the beginning of the month. Okay, so let me just, um, y'all know there's a host code, so. It'll be posted in the video. Let me just put my little name up here. <laughs> okay, so um, today I am using the awesome, awesome, awesome Sweet Little Stockings bundle to make your cards. And it's actually a whole suite of products, project, products, goodness, called Sweet Stockings Sweet. There are lots of cute samples in this catalog, of course, which if you need catalogs, let me know if you don't have a demonstrator. And, um... There's a stamp set, dies, felt, embellishments, ribbon, and the designer paper. So I'm gonna be using all of that today, plus some other stuff as well. And for my first card, and I hope I don't forget to show you my extra samples at the end. I hope I don't forget that. For my first card, oh, and I wanna take a little commercial and remind you guys about, um, sharing the video, commenting on the video, both of those will get you entered to win my pro my cards for today, the three that I'm gonna make, as well as, um, I have a bag here of a class packet. Um, 
that's on Facebook and you can do it on replay and then over on YouTube comment thumbs up um, etc all that will get you entered to win okay let me take out what I pre did there so for the first card our card base is basic white it is a half of a sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock so really and truly anyone can craft you don't have to be crafty I'm not you don't have to be some kind of genius you take a eight and a half by 11 and cut it in half. So that's five and a half inches or four and a fourth, depending on what kind of card you're making. So this one's been cut and then I'm just gonna fold it in half and I like to use the bone folder because there's less wrinkles on the inside. So it does look a little more professional whoever, for whoever you give it to. Um, but that'll be my card base and then I'm gonna set that aside. Well, I'm, I always say that, but then I need to give you a visual. So the next layer is my cherry cobbler cardstock, which is, of course, a Stampin' Up! color. Everything matches and coordinates. You're going to see that color in lots of stuff today. So it's four by five and a fourth. It's just a fourth inch smaller than the front of this card base. And then the designer paper I'm using, isn't this adorable? But I'm using the green, the old olive stripes. But look at those pets. <laughs> so cute. Um, it's three and three fourths by five. So same thing, fourth inch less. So that designer paper is called Sweet Stockings. And you get lots of pets in this one that you can hand cut out. There are not dies for any of the pets in here. There are dies for some of the stockings. Um, but you can hand cut these little pets out. And then you get some generic uh, sheets as well that can be holiday or anything. So lots of cherry cobbler and old olives. So look at these little stockings. There's not dies for these little ones, but they're so cute. They have, they each have a pet inside. Cats, dogs, and rodents. <laughs> and, um, and then again, the back is a nice generic sort of, um, doesn't even have to be Christmas themed really. More pets. We have a grumpy cat and a dog with a wreath, and a little bird with a letter, like so cute. So you can cut those out or use it as a full sheet. Um, more generic designs. <clears throat> Here's this sheet of stockings, which do all, there's three sizes and we have three stocking dies. So those will fit. I mean, you can die cut all of these out, which you'll see on one of my cards today. Here's the one I'm using now. So all those pets, even fish in this one, cat, dog, fish. And then the green stripes on the back, They're, they are diagonal, by the way. And then this one is great. It's just the old-fashioned Christmas lights, um, all intertwined and, you know, going all different directions. Pool party. Uh, I'm going to say bumblebee, but I'll need to check. Cherry cobbler and old olive. And then just a nice pool party with some white lines going both directions on the back. So the colors are basic black, bumblebee, cherry cobbler, cinnamon cider, evening evergreen. I'm going to lose these. And um, old olive and pool party. So that's how you can match and coordinate everything. <laughs> I got everything static. Electricity stuck to that. Okay. Um, so then I have a scrap of basic white. I have a piece of Daffodil Delight. I should have used Bumblebee, but I didn't read. Um, that I've pre-die cut. I'll tell you about that in a second. And then another piece of basic white that I've pre-die cut. I will tell you about that. And then here is one of the stockings from the designer paper. So I'm going to grab a sheet over here. Show you how I've just been cutting away with my scissors loosely around these as I need them, and then I run them through the die cut machine. And, oh, almost dropped everything. Here are the dies. So there's a small, medium, and large stocking. This happens to be the large one. I chose this one specifically because it had a lot of cherry cobbler and old olive solid colors. Um, but there's all these different designs on here but I wanted that one specifically for this card. I actually tried some of the patterned ones and they clashed too much. Um, anyway, and I'm gonna use some of these other dies today as well, so you'll see that at that time. Um, and then these two dies, the Daffodil Delight is from Hippo and Friends. It's the medium one that's, I always say it's a square, and but not a square out of the three labels that come in Hippo and Friends. 
great set of dies. Um, and that's going to be like a background for us to build a little scene on. And then for our greeting, I use these awesome dies called Seasonal Labels. They're in the holiday catalog and they're bundled with a stamp set. And one of my seasonal labels is not in here, I believe, because I didn't put them away yet. I think Landa returned it yesterday. Anyway, she had one of them, but it cuts out these pine cones and greenery from the stamp set it coordinates with, but it has all these different labels, including again, one that is not put back in here yet. So seasonal labels, those are great. And I pre die cut that in basic white to put my greeting on. And then I also pre die cut a little old olive piece, <laughs> greenery thingy. Where's the dies? And it's in this set of dies as well from the stockings. Okay, so for this card, I want to stamp some stuff to go in the stocking or in it and around it, I should say. So what I want is I'm going to grab Memento Black ink to stamp because I'm going to color them in with Stampin' Blends. And then I want Cherry Cobbler ink for my greeting because it matches. Um, so let me open this ink pad up. Memento Black is, you can press harder on these than our regular ink pads because it's a different type of pad. So I'm going to press nice and firm there and then hold my stamp down for a couple of seconds. So you can twist and tap on Memento, different than our other ones. And I want, so that was the candy cane and the two gifts, basically, I'm stamping in Memento Black. And then I'm going to color those in. And then um, my greeting says Christmas greetings. And for this one, I'll just tap, tap, tap. I'm not gonna press super hard. I'm not gonna twist because it just doesn't work on these pads. But I definitely move my stamp around to get all the sections of the ink pad to touch it um, to, to make up for any imperfections in the ink pad or my re-inking of the ink pad. And then I'm gonna stamp that, but I'm gonna hold it for a few seconds because this is a real thick greeting. Um, it's not just super thin, so just to make sure that ink transfers really well to my white paper. So cute. Okay, and then, let me look at y'all's comments here. Hey, Liz. Hey, Sarah, thank you. Uh, Janet, you're so good. My host code. I'm so glad you did that for me. I thought somebody might. I'm going to use a Stampin' Blend here. W. Ooh, I have terrible handwriting, by the way. N-K-D. Sorry, I can't talk and write at the same time. W-7. These codes are so... <laughs> I can never memorize them. W-7-E-K. So, thank you so much to Janet. If you place an online order of 25 or more, actually, even if it's less than 25, but because um, you'll still get a thank you card. You want to use this host code right now till the end of October um, to receive the um, free gifts I told you about earlier. Okay, thank you, Janet. Now, the reason I used Memento Black as a reminder is this is water-based and alcohol, or Stampin' Blends are alcohol-based markers. So, when you color with alcohol markers, you don't want to color onto an alcohol ink because the word blend implies that the colors blend. They kind of mix together. And we don't want that black mixing in. We want it to stay put. Now, I'm not using all these colors on this these images, but I'm using all these colors on all the cards today. So, I just want to show you all right now and then we don't have to do the whole thing later. So we're using Crumb Cake, Pool Party, Cherry Cobbler, Daffodil Delight, Smoky Slate, and Old Olive within everything today. But I'll grab what I need as I need it. Um, and I'm not coloring everything today for the camera. I've pre-done a bunch of it, or all of it really. So don't get stressed out about that. <laughs> but of course, we may have someone who doesn't know how to use Stampin' Blends or you know, whatever situation. Hey, Julie, thanks for sharing. So, I'm going to give a few tips. So, first of all, I'm going to use dark cherry cobbler for the candy cane. And 
on your blend, there is a, an, a picture on the front that shows you which end is which tip. So we have the brush tip, which is the thick one. So there's a thick line and the fine point, which is the thin line. So there's a picture of the brush tip and a thick line and vice versa. So anyway, I am just using the fine point for sure for this candy cane because it's so small. I also put my readers on. You can't see that, but I did. And I would just color those stripes all the way down, just like that. So super simple on that one. No blending for me. And then for my gifts, I also did not do any blending on those. I actually used, I forgot, the Dark Cherry Cobbler on the small gift for the ribbon and bow. So again, I'm using the fine point for almost everything today. But with the amazing thing about Stampin' Blends is how well they literally blend. So you're never going to have streaks. And so for those of us, especially who are not artistic, they're just like magic. So when you see a streak, you color back over it and it goes away. Um, or you blend color over it more, especially for a larger section than this, and it goes away. So then I used dark pull party for the stripes on this small gift. Uh, so I did every other one and so it's white and pull party stripes. So all you have to do here is pay attention to <laughs> skipping a space and what goes across on the other side of the cherry cobbler. And then I used light pull party and light daffodil delight on the gift. And I will, I believe there's something, or maybe not, I don't, let me look real quick. Actually, I don't think I need to die cut anything today. So just um, for the sake of, in case we have any new people here, let me just die cut one of these out real quick. Um, just to give you that visual because I've pre done it. So what's gonna happen is I'll run it through my machine and I'll have these perfectly cut out images and you can see how I've colored them there. Um, so the dot, that's what the dies are for as the name implies. And you need a stamp and cut and emboss machine. We have a, our regular size one and we have a mini. You can use either one, but the mini only fits small things, three and a half inches or less. So it would fit all of these dies, but mine's kind of packed right now. I'm trying to, okay, I'm like, where did I put these dies? There's my candy cane die. So blade down. Uh, anyway, so if you get the mini, there will be a few limitations where you cannot fit all your dies on it. But if you get the big one, everything will fit. But a lot of people start with the mini until they're ready to really make the investment. The mini is 60 and the large is 120. This machine is amazing. It does cut stronger and deeper than my Big Shot did. I'm not dissing the Big Shot, but this one is a little bit stronger. So less run-throughs. Um, and it also comes with everything you need to die cut and emboss. So there you go. And actually a tip is you, I always forget to do this, but I really should have die cut first and then colored because sometimes your dies can slip when you're going through that little machine. And then if you spent all that time coloring and it slips and now you have to start over anyway, it's very annoying. So <laughs> just a tip there when you're working at home. Okay, so now I have all my pieces to put this together. So this is, um, I was trying to make all, not every card pet related. We're actually only doing one with pets on it now. And then I'll show you a pet, uh, some other ones from my class. Um, with my adhesive, so I'm going to use Stamp and Seal. Love it. It's super sticky. So you don't need to use very much. I'm going to place adhesive on the designer paper first. And place that on the cherry cobbler. And then now, because I know I'm not wrapping ribbon around this or wrapping anything around the back, I'm going to attach it to my card base. By the way, um, who was it that gave me the host code? I have such a short-term memory. 
<laughs> Janet. Um, what Janet did is she said she looked it up on my website. All she did, um, and thank you again, Janet, is go to stamptherapist.com. Anytime you need info from me, you can probably find it at stamptherapist.com. I always post the host code there for sure every month. Um, and I, there's an event section. There's all kinds of stuff on that site. So anyway, just FYI. Okay, so my greeting is going to go somewhere along the bottom here. And then this little label from Hippo and Friends is going to kind of be centered above it. So I'm just laying the greeting down here just to give me a little visual of where I want to place my, this daffodil label flat. I want that flat. And then for my stocking, the little greenery thing, I don't know what to call it, and the candy cane are going to go inside. So I'm going to grab my silicone craft sheet and put a little adhesive at the top of the stocking. The silicone just protects my table in case I go outside of the edges with my glue, which for smaller things sometimes is more likely to happen. Um, and so I put the adhesive on the back of the stocking, and then I'm just going to position these things that go in the stocking where I want them, but I'll be able to shift them if I decide to, but I think that's actually gonna be fine. Yeah, and so then I will go ahead and add Stampin' Dimensionals now to the back of that, and uh, which are here. I've got my minis back. Last week I had lost them. Um, we have mini Stampin' Dimensionals and regular, which is the larger ones. I have converted and I only use these minis now. Um, so I'm gonna use a couple up here at the top because I wanna cover both of those pieces so they don't fall off later. And then I'm just gonna put one at the toe and one in the middle. So you can use as many as you want. I don't think it takes that many, so that's how many I use. Um, and these are going to, or this stocking is gonna go toward the left of the yellow piece at an angle and then I'm just using these gifts to to give me a visual to make sure I have it where I want it but the gifts are going to kind of cascade to the right of it overlapping so it's going to be basically like that so I see that on my tallest gift the left part is going to be attached to the stocking and the top right will be loose here which is raised up the stockings on dimensionals so I'm gonna put a dimensional on that top right part that hangs off and adhesive on the part that will be attached to the stocking hopefully I'm making sense stick that down and then do the same thing to the small gift so the left side gets adhesive the right side gets the dimensional and actually I think I did this to my other one I'm gonna tuck a dimensional under the bottom part that's hanging off of that larger gift as well so there we go our little like arrangement I don't know what you call it on top of that label and then just dimensionals here on my greeting I'm going to use three of my minis you get seven I believe it's 720 of these for four dollars and then you have these really thick wide edges that you can cut apart and use as well so they're they are a really good deal. The greeting just goes along the bottom, centered between everything else that's left. And then last but not least, to finish it off, I'll use some of these matte decorative dots, which are, let me look in the catalog real quick. Um, yeah, Eve Bumblebee, Cherry Cobbler, Evening Evergreen, and Old Olive. I guess these do look like evening evergreen, but all of these are ombre. So it is, it throws me off a little bit. They're darkest, each section is darkest at the top and they each row gets lighter. So this evening evergreen, those light are very Bermuda Bay. Um, and even old olive, it kind of goes to like a, more of a, um, what's up, granny apple green. So anyway, just know they're ombre. And for me, I'm just like going with it. So some of my cards have a lighter cherry cobbler and some have a darker. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to take my take your pick tool, the pointy end. You can also use the paddle end or you can use the putty end. It's a really good tool. 
There's other things you can interchange in these tools. Um, and add a couple of my cherry cobbler dots to the end. And there's multiple sizes as well. I think there's, because I haven't used these old olives. So there's three sizes, small, medium, and large. Little sections there. Anyway, that's it. That's that card. Very cute. I hope. <laughs> I hope you think it's cute. Um, pretty simple to, you know, not, I mean, yes, we have the coloring and all that stuff, but hey, let me check, catch up here. Hey, Dorothy, hope you're doing good. Hey, Marsha, no problem. Julie shared. Thank you, Julie. And good morning, Cynthia. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah, stinking cute. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing, Sarah. Hey, Mary. Good to see you. Diane in Minnesota. Hello. Catherine, I can't help you. Sorry. <laughs> but hey, you have that whole demonstrator discount thing. So that's cool, right? <laughs> yeah, Sarah, I, she said I wouldn't have thought, thought to have used yellow. Um, I used, I tested so many colors back here and it was a real struggle. I tested different designer papers too. And of course, I'm sure other people can come up with way better things than me. But um, yellow ended up looking the best. And that's why I tied it together with that yellow there. But yellow is a color in this paper. So that's I'm not like I am came up with that color idea on my own. But anyway, I literally have at least two other die cuts of this shape and other colors that got rejected. So that's funny that you said that. Um, but I also thought this could be embossed and, and give it even more of a wow, but I wanted to keep it, you know, not so step, 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 step. But anyway, thank you. Good. I'm glad y'all like it. Yeah. But again, like just in case you have designing, you know, issues like me, use your designer paper suggestions. So even though Bumblebee isn't in the sheet I used, it is suggested in this designer paper. Even if you don't buy the designer paper, many times I will get out my catalog and just look at the colors that they used and combine those for other projects. So anyway, thank y'all very much. Okay, next card. This is actually, it ended up being no stamping. Um, that wasn't on purpose. And there's ways you could add stamping for sure, plus a greeting on the inside. But anyway, so I have a basic white card base, five and a half, eight and a half, pool party, cardstock, five, four by five and a fourth. And I have two strips of the designer paper. So I have, I'm using the back side of the one with the little bitty pets. This is one and a half, the little, I'm sorry, the little stockings with pets inside. This is one and a half by four. And then another strip, with the one with the ornaments on it, one and a half by four. I'm trying to remember which one goes. Yeah, I put the ornaments on top, so it's gonna kind of go like that. This is um, portrait shape, just like the last one, portrait. And then I took my felt, which I really wanted to use because I bought it, right? Which I used it some in my retreat class. But you can see what else I've used for today. Um, Anyway, I'm like, I bought it. I want to use it. So I took the felt and I die cut from two sets of dies. The stockings dies. I believe that's what these are called. They're just called stockings dies. The ones that are bundled with the sweet, sweet little stockings stamp set. And I die cut this awesome die that comes in here that's a big banner basically so let me measure it for y'all just in case you don't have this and you want to know if i have my ruler here i've used it today right i don't know let me grab this other one i thought i me measured something earlier um so it's about two and a fourth by almost four and a half so that's a pretty good size to make a banner, to make gift tags, or just to put on your cards. So I die cut the cherry cobbler felt with that. And it does put the stitch marks. They are like, you kind of need to be in person to really see them 
I think. But it does put those stitch marks in that felt. And then I took the Whimsical Trees Bundle dies, the Christmas tree dies, which a few of mine are missing because of card class this month. They're, they need them to use them in class. But this is what we're doing for sampler this month. Ugh, see what I mean? How good it's going to be. But anyway, I took this big old tree die, which there is a stamp that matches. Oh no, this one doesn't have a stamp. Anyway, I took this big old tree die and I cut out the old olive tree. So cute. <laughs> and it's fuzzy. So we're going to make a card. It's pretty simple. And then the star die, there is a little star in sweet, the stockings dies. And so I actually had one left over in gold foil that Landa had cut for me for my retreat class. She had cut a few extra, so I grabbed one of those, but I could have cut it myself, obviously. And that is the, just our gold foil from our annual catalog, gold foil. Love it, that's a standard like basic you need in your stash, gold foil. So that's all I need for this card besides some ribbon and dots let's put it together um, so what I will tell you how I thought this card could be in, upgraded I was gonna say something but anyway upgraded from my version a you could emboss this background with an embossing folder I thought of the time tasteful textiles or any folder you want maybe anything whatever or even a stamped subtle background which I thought the one that would look cute is one I don't own. Darn it. <laughs> um, I don't remember which direction it is in the catalog. But it's the... Um, it looks like some stitching, basically. I know where it's... Like, what page section it's on that section. Anyway. Hopefully y'all don't mind this part. Just to give you... It's right there. I thought this one would look really good on this card. It's called knit together so it looks like knit anyway I didn't but you can and then also and or the way I'm going to put it together you could have stamped a greeting at the bottom first but it would have been to to me need to have been a different greeting than what comes in this set Christmas greetings was too big the ones we just used the one we just used I could have put sending lots of love actually that would have fit but the rest were not, I wouldn't need a long skinny one. So anyway, hopefully I'm making sense. I just want you to know there, that I don't think I'm like, can't be improved upon. <laughs> so I'm going to put one strip of the designer paper. Basically between the two strips, I want to put them in the center of the card. So I actually didn't place that down very heavy. That way I can move it if I want. So yeah, it's a little bit high. I didn't press too hard when I laid it down there, so I can pick it up a little. You could also use a ruler, but please. And you could overlap them a tiny bit just so there's no gap or weirdness in between. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but basically I centered those two designer papers across the middle. And then the way I attached my felt, I did it two different ways for the two different pieces. So for the... Um, banner I placed it where I wanted it on the card and held it on one end and I gave myself a visual <laughs> and I placed adhesive directly on the card of course stamp and seal super strong and then I did the same thing at the bottom so basically I'm using my banner as a visual of where do I place this adhesive and it's not too far and then I tested it and it's see I'm pulling pretty strongly there I don't want to stretch this because it's felt but it didn't come up but for the tree I uh, well not but for the tree I placed it directly on the felt but I want to put it on the cherry cobbler banner instead of the tree just in case it like stretched it out but it's a really strong adhesive my cards have not come apart so look at that simple simple and then we'll just use a mini stampin dimensional for our star and the star will kind of cover up the tip top of the tree put this on our card base 
And by the way, the the felt cut in you know one run through, just super simple there. Okay, so we have that. Now let me grab that ribbon. When you hear me like silently pausing, it's because I'm looking for something usually. <laughs> Either that or reading comments. Um, and I'm gonna, this is the pool party striped grow green ribbon in the holiday catalog, which is sold separately, but, or you can buy the whole group of the sweet stocking stuff together. Anyway, I'm going to make a bunny ear bow. I'm going to leave this ribbon attached to the roll so that I don't have any waste on the one side. So basically, uh, these are almost, they either are or are almost zero waste bows because of leaving it on the roll. Um, so I have two bunny ears in one in each hand. I have lots of space in between them because I need to work with it. And then I have my tails and I do want this tail a little longer than my usual. Then uh, all my fingers are pointing at me and the ribbon has never been twisted and turned as I made these two bunny ear shapes. Then I cross my right over my left, the right loop over the left and you have this little shape and then you push the right loop down into the rabbit hole and then you pull and it won't be like an even bow. It usually won't be pretty, but then you start pulling on the tails and fixing it. But this is gonna be kind of a medium sized bow to go right in the center of the tree. So here when I cut zero waste and then I need to even up this side a little. And then I'll just mini glue dot that one on. Let me catch up here. Donna shared, thank you. Thank you, Janet. I went back exactly far enough. Thank you, Eleanor. And Della in New uh, North Dakota, good, good morning, hello. Cindy. I understand. Cynthia, thank you. <laughs> You're a sucker for trees, Sarah. Love it. So I'm just going to reveal one glue dot here. This is a really good tree, like this tree set, because it has that garland, which I didn't even try to put on here, but um, the garland die, really good. Okay, so. Oh, I got it. So that. Uh, bow's going to go right in the center. Then all we need is some Christmas ornaments on this tree. So I will use those matte decorative dots. And you can use whatever color you want. I think the cherry cobbler ones would look great, but I'm running low on them. So I'm using the bumblebee ones. Just need to find my take your pick tool. I'm looking for, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> and um, what size did I use? Oh, I used different sizes. So I actually used the lighter ones on mine because I think the darker ones will look better. So I saved them for you guys. Because um, remember the ombre thing. So I started at the top with the smallest ones and just kind of did zigzag back and forth. And then past the bow, I added three more. So I'll go medium. medium and then one large at the bottom. Now, also I could have mixed up the colors and, and done multiple colors, but anyway, I chose just to do yellow. So that's the card, kind of simple. Vintage, Cynthia says, thank you. Uh-oh, Julie, um, if you can hear me, Julie, <laughs> close the app, get out, fully close it, then go back in and go back to my business page. Um, that usually will fix the freezing, unless it's freezing for everybody. Where's my other, okay, so here's my original. I guess I made those tails a little shorter on that one. Let me bring that one up so you can see it as well. But yeah, so simple. Um, again, you could add a greeting down here. I would like one to go all the way across if I did, but you can just stamp your greeting on the inside. Um, or em emboss or stamp the background as well. Maybe even designer paper. I'm not really good at mixing my patterns of designer paper, so. All right, the last one is the 
the real deal of what this set is all about. <laughs> so, thank you, Nancy. We have our card base, five and a half by eight and a half. Then we have a piece, oh my goodness, of basic white. <laughs> okay, we have a piece of basic white that's four by five and a fourth, and it's been embossed with the macrame embossing folder. But look, I just noticed I missed a section. Like, I must have put my paper in crooked. <laughs> I'll just keep this card for myself. Um, so here's the macrame folder. It's in the annual catalog and you just put your paper in there straight, not hanging out the edge like I obviously did and uh, run it through the die cut machine. One step, simple. And then you have this. So it looks like a sweater kind of to me. And then I have a big old scrap of basic white a little strip of the designer paper so it's the actually same green old olive and evergreen stripes from the first card but it's one half inch by five and a fourth and then I pre die cut a label for myself for um, my greeting I meant to say from from potted succulent dies which I still claim that everybody should own these dies even if you're not into succulents because you get these four, one, two, three, four awesome label dies. You also get this, where is it? <laughs> this big old background die in the back there. And then, of course, the ones that don't match a shape we see here, there's a stamp set that matches them. But you get a flower pot, like all kinds of stuff. So, but those shapes, I love these um, labels. Okay, so those are my pieces. Let me get my card base out of the way. This is, in case anyone missed the beginning, I had the wrong host code, so I wrote it on the back, and so it's loose, and it's got sticky back here, because <laughs> I had the other one glued down. But it's a little bit of a hot mess. Okay, so for my stamping, my greeting on this card is going to say, Very Merry one of the greetings in this set. And I'm using Cherry Cobbler again. So actually for all three cards, it was just the two ink colors, Cherry Cobbler and Memento Black. And actually the class I taught or ran, whatever, was the same. Mary, um, Cherry Cobbler and Memento Black were the only two colors we used. So there's our greeting. And then for this card, we are gonna stamp all three of the stocking images in Memento Black. So remember, you can press harder on that ink pad. And if you don't have a very hard, firm table like I do, mine's very, it's like a countertop basically, um, then don't forget to use your stamp and pierce mat under to smooth everything out with photopolymer. So there's three sizes, sizes of stockings in this set. And then there's three pets, a cute dog, a cute cat, which I have a little secret friend for this cat to show you, and a cute hamster gerbil, maybe even a mouse. I did have pet mice at one point when I was a kid. And a Santa hat that fits any of those animals or other stamps you own, I'm sure. All right, so stamped all those in Memento Black. And then you're gonna watch me color every single one in from beginning to end. Just kidding, haha. -ha. <laughs> but <laughs> bringing those blends back in and um, they all get colored in. So I'm gonna give some tips and then I've pre-colored, don't worry. But look, um, so this, this is, I measured the cutest Halloween stamps or actual size on the box. And let me just get the cat I pre-colored. This little cat is the same size as this little cat, so they can be buddies. You can have two different shapes. There's a little cat face. Yeah, that's the cat face and the cat outline. And let me just show you real quick the cat um, in my Halloween sampler, just because I had it right here. So see, they can be friends. So you can have mix and match your cats. They don't have, that doesn't have to be a Halloween cat or this one can turn into a Halloween cat, vice versa. Um, so there you go. 
stretch your dollar a little more. <laughs> um, okay, so let me give you my little tips here on coloring for, I have to look at what I did. I did only a little blending on these. So I think I'll just show you some of the blending. So crumb cake is the color I used for the dog and the hamster. So I did dark and I like to do only one section or um, section of a section at a time because this ink can dry on an alcohol marker and then it doesn't blend as well. So for the dog, I colored with the dark um, stamp, dark crumb cake sort of outline, I don't know what you call these sections, but this section of the dog around its face and nose and mouth, and then just the details that Stampin' Up! put there, and then also at the bottom of the feet. There's many different ways to color this dog in where you can leave white spots or do multiple colors. And then I took light crumb cake and filled in the whole thing. And that gives it... Um, or when, I'm sorry, when you fill in the whole thing, you go over the dark section as well, and that gives you the blending where it's not just a harsh line, it's just a smooth fade out. And then with blending, or with blender, sorry, with Stampin' Blends, you can go back and add as much more dark as you want, blend it back out, add light, lift, lift color with our color lifter, um, and you can do all that besides the color lifter because you don't want to over color lift. As I'm doing right now, as many times as you want and you're not going to ruin your paper. You're not going to break it down, break down the fibers because this is alcohol, not water. Um, and then you just have all this awesome detail. And put the lid on immediately because these dry out like a Sharpie in two seconds. <laughs> Darn you Sharpies. Um, I did the, the little hamster the same way. I added some dark on its little cheeks, ears, and feet, and then colored with crumb cake all over. The cat, same thing, but I used smoky slate. So I added a little dark right there on its little forehead, and then cheeks, and I actually made the whole feet dark, because why not? And then, I hope my voice isn't going down. I know when I do blend sometimes, apparently I move my head to a different spot and the microphone doesn't pick it up as well. I forgot to speak up. But, um, oops, I accidentally colored the eyeball, so that's fine. But again, with the blending, you're just going over the whole thing. And I still will claim, <laughs> my opinion, is that you can use the brush tip or the fine point and you still end up with the same result at the end because of the magic of these markers with their blending technique. So for a second, I can see these swirly lines I'm making, but then they disappear. Okay, so that's kind of the pets. For the stocking, I added a little dark cherry cobbler in the crease here and on the edge here, and then I went over the whole thing with light, and it does add some awesome detail. Let's look at the dog and the hamster and the cat again. Whoops, maybe I should put them in camera. So that's those and of course die cut out. And then the stockings, color however you want as far as what colors, but like uh, again, where I did and didn't do blending, I added dark on the stitch marks. I did all three of this small stocking and then light all over. So it's the cuff, I think is what this is called, and then the little patches on the toe and heel are where I did this pool party. So that just makes that stitching um, stand out a little more, and you can go back again and add more dark, and then if that's splotchy, you go back with your light and blend it out. So that's how you do that. And um, on some of them, so let me show you this small one that I just showed you. I did add dark daffodil on the left side of the stocking and then went over the whole thing with light. So you see how that's a little darker right there, but it's such a smooth transition. And then on the largest stocking, 
I added dark daffodil to these little dots on the cuff and then went over the whole thing with light daffodil. And then the stripes are simply light old olive and light pool party, no blending. And last but not least, the medium size one is old olive for the middle section and there is blending so it's dark at the edge and then light all over. A dark pool party on one of these little stripes, light daffodil delight on the next stripe and then blended cherry cobbler on the cuff and toe. So there you go. Hopefully that all makes sense. Now that you do, after you do all that, you're ready to put this card together. See how y'all are doing. Julie, that's weird. You can't get back in. I don't know what's happening. Facebook. <laughs> um, I did a Facebook Live yesterday. Well, it was a different kind of live in the cruise page. And we had a lot of technical issues. So I'm adding adhesive to my half inch strip and it goes across the bottom. This is a landscape card across the bottom of my embossed white, but not all the way to the bottom. And it just helped me kind of break up this card. And then um, I'm gonna place my greeting at the top left where it's going to go, but I'm not gonna glue it down yet. And then what I wanna do, so I realized, cause I didn't even do this with my retreat class, but I was like, oh, I guess you could do small, medium, large. The um, hamster gets a small stocking, cat, medium, and dog, large, right? So if you wanna do that, I just randomly did it for retreat class. I don't even remember, but we'll look at those samples in a second. Um, so I just put a little Stampin' Mini Dimensional at the bottom of each face and then attached that to each stocking. But this is sort of, it's not temporary, but it's just so I can see how tall it really is with the animal on it. And yes, a little bit of the sticky might be exposed. For example, if I press down there, the cat will be stuck to my table a little bit. <laughs> so, um, but you can still shift it on your card as long as you don't press too hard. See, little hamster stuck to the table. But, so I did small, medium, large. The hamster is first, then the cat, then the dog stalking. And I tried to stair step them. Trying to make it match my other card. You know, so they're like, they go from low to high. Something like that. And then, so now I know where they're going to go and I can go ahead and attach them down. So I'm going to need one more dimensional at the top of each pet face and then stamp and seal at the bottom. So I'll do one at a time, stamp and seal on the stocking and mini dimensional, one more. Oh, can y'all see how I messed up the, the hamster on the back? I don't remember what, oh, I stamped too close to the edge. I wouldn't have been able to die cut it out. Okay, so Julie shared. Thank you. Facebook does this thing now on my iPad while I'm watching this where I had to touch it to see comments and they only stay for a second. Pat, that's weird. Pat had trouble too. Um, with freezing on one device, but on the other, she's fine. But sometimes it is our devices, like, ugh, it's just weird. Technology. Love, hate. Okay, so there's that. Now, who's going to get to wear the hat? I chose the kitty cat. <laughs> so, the cat, I'm going to place a dimensional on top there and a little adhesive on the bottom of the hat. And then place it on the little cat. So cute. Um, and then for my greeting, I took my ribbon, which here it is, my pool party striped ribbon, and I added some adhesive on the back of the greeting, tape runner adhesive, stamp and seal. And then I just placed the ribbon, well, you'll see what I'm gonna do right now, but I am gonna do that little zigzag thing from the roll 
but y'all see how I'm looking at the front of this because that's what matters how it looks this the back doesn't tell me if it looks cute on the front or not this is what tells me if it looks cute on the front by looking at the front while you do this and then um, grab my scissors here and cut but even at this point if which this did happen to me yesterday if I put it on here and it's positioned wrong and it like covers up something or I just decide I don't like it I can still pull this ribbon off and readjust it so this is a very forgiving technique but I like it so I'm gonna leave it like that and then place dimensionals on top including over the ribbon to secure it better and I'm using more than I normally would for a piece this size I'm using about uh, two, four, five here to secure the ribbon down well and balance this out. And now I'll place the greeting on with dimensionals. And then last but not least will be some little matte decorative dots and then we'll be done. So cute. Let me go ahead and put this on my card base. Go in the middle there. I don't understand how y'all can't get on the live but you can comment on the live <laughs> like maybe it's just frozen but you're it's allowing you to comment hopefully replay will work cross our fingers and YouTube version but I do apologize I don't know what's going on let me see what other people said is it Julie Julie and Linda Ugh, darn it thank you Eleanor and Ramona yeah, so I don't know if everybody's been kicked off or not. <laughs> I don't know. I apologize. Darn it. So for this one, I'm going to add a couple of uh, cherry cobbler dots, the small ones. And just on the greeting piece, that's a little, oops, not where I wanted it. Um, but they're not like on the, the sides. They're just sort of off set in a couple of different spots there. That is the finished card. Let me bring up the one I made before because it doesn't have the embossing mistake. Um, and that is it. Cute little animals. Donna's fine in Louisiana. Ramona's working, so that's good. Pat's fine. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah, this technology stuff, it is annoying sometimes, right? <laughs> And then like you practice and you think you've done everything, figured it all out. And then there's some problem when you go live or when you even just record something or whatever. So yeah. Okay. Let's look at all three cards from today using sweet little stockings. So cute. Everything's all crooked and stuff. Okay, so there's the three cards we made today, and then I'm gonna show you these other ideas. Um, just a reminder, sweet little stockings bundle. The dies cut. There's a die for pretty much all the images in, in this set, plus extra, you know, the... Oh, I didn't even show these, but I wanna show all my other samples. You can cut out little cuffs and toes and socks. There's that other one right there. Um, the star I showed you, the little greenery things, a bow, so a little small banner. It's a really great set of dies. So, um, thank you, Nancy. Thanks, Stella, Ramona, Jackie. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thanks, Pauline and Sarah and Cynthia. Janet's working. Thank you, Janet. Cynthia's working. Jackie's working. Nancy got kicked off her phone as well. What's the deal with phones today? <laughs> um, okay, so in my class, uh, I don't have all of these tags. And they actually were, like, given options, like, because you just have some white paper there. You could stamp all hamsters if you're into hamsters or all dogs or whatever. But we made these cute little gift tags. And see how you can uh, just hand cut out the little animals from the designer paper. There's a to and from stamp in this set. <laughs> I love it, Janet. Um, so you can make cute little gift tags with this set. I think they're adorable. 
um, each little pet here is holding a candy cane. And these are just the, the designer paper stockings. So you can mix and match some stamping, some use the designer paper. Now this card that I came up with for this other class, I thought was so cute. And it wasn't intended this way, but when I finished, I was like, that looks like a card from The Grinch, which is... My favorite Christmas movie, The Grinch with Jim Carrey, which nobody likes, but I don't know why. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> but doesn't that look like a, a Dr. Seuss kind of card? Anyway, either way, it's a cute Christmas card. Um, but uses the gifts only in the Christmas greetings. And then we made one where we basically made the pets a little, like a picture frame kind of deal. Santa Paws is coming to town. So cute. And then uh, we also did this sampler. So in this, what did I want to show you? Here's the felt stockings. We cut out the stocking and the cuff and toe and heel with felt. Um, and I think we just used glue dots on that one. And there's the little bitty banner die. We made a little gift tag. And then here's just different colorings of the animals and stockings. So, <laughs> thank you, Nancy. <laughs> It does look like a Grinch card, doesn't it? Like, not like it's Grinchy, but it's the style of that whole deal. The books, the movies, the cartoons, etc. <laughs> I'm glad y'all like that. It was an accident, but as soon as I finished it, I was like, <gasps> and I texted it to April, my retreat partner. <laughs> I was like, look, I made a Grinch card. <laughs> that tree is kind of Grinchy, you know? So definitely think about that when you're, and look, green fur. So, right? Um, when you're designing, if you're into the Grinch or you have kids or grandkids or whatever. So anyway, thank y'all very much. You can still comment. You can still get entered to win the cards on replay. You can still share like Pauline just did. Thank you very much. You can um, do all that over on YouTube. Subscribe, thumbs up, etc. Sarah loves the Grinch. Good. Yay, Ramona. I swear, like, I saw a survey on Facebook last, a year or two ago, I don't remember. What's your favorite Christmas movie? And nobody picked The Grinch. They didn't even rank it. And a lot of people were like, what movie is that? <laughs> so I'm glad to hear I have some Grinch lovers out there. <laughs> I think it's a really good movie. Anyway, um, all right. Well, hopefully you guys are working on your Christmas cards and getting all your Christmas crafting done early so you can mail it early according to the news anyway. <laughs> but, um, you know, so you won't be stressed during the holidays. And if you need help with that, you can join my stamp -a stack my sampler, my card class. They're all going to be Christmas this month. And we're starting our Christmas scrapbook this month and we'll do two more well, we'll end, we will end up doing four Christmas pages all together, four 12 by 12. So any questions on any of that stuff, let me know. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for all my Grinch supporters out there. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Linda. Um, and I guess I will see y'all next week on Thursday. Bye.